Welcome to Cook Food Good, the show where I teach you how to cook food good and do other things good too, but mostly just the cooking. I could teach you how to skateboard. I can ollie, I, well, I, I've ollied once. Today we're making steak, we're focusing on three different cuts. Now we got like our big old special occasion ribeye. We got our slightly less special occasion top sirloin that's for like Arbor Day and four month anniversaries. And then we got our like typical weeknight flat meat, which is one of my personal favorites. I'm gonna teach you guys how to take this from seasoning to preparation to eating it. Put the meat in your mouth and you mash it with your teeth until it slides down your throat hole. There's a common misconception that when prepping steak to cook it, you need to bring it up to room temperature. That does literally nothing. It takes hours for your steak to actually come up to room temperature on the inside, and by that time, you've already let a bunch of nasty bacteria grow on it. The oven and the pan are plenty hot to make your steak become hot. Even though all three of these steaks are very, very different, for me, the same seasoning method gets applied to all three, which is just salt it right before you cook it, and I'll get into that when I start cooking up this flat meat. Who decided on flat meat? What, fire that PR person who's just like, ah, it's meat, kinda looks like a flap. With the steak, you really want to cook it on high. That is creating what's called a Maillard reaction, which is a sciencey word for brown crusty food equals good flavor. The problem with thin pans, when you cook a big piece of meat in it, the meat is very cold. No matter how hot the pan is, it's gonna drop temperature, which is why I love simple thin steaks like this because you can hit it for like two minutes on each side, and it's perfect on the inside. Now, if you look at the flat meat, it's really thin. It's about a half inch thick, and there's a lot of meat hardos out there. But think like for a steak to be really good, it has to be this like two inch thick, massive ribeye that you babysit in the sous vide machine and all that. For me, it's not true. You can take like a cheap cut of meat that's typically like $3.99 a pound, and you can cook it deliciously in a pan in about four minutes. As far as seasoning goes, I like to only do salt on all my steaks for a very specific reason. Marinades are like a bit of a, they're a pyramid scheme. So many people are like, you let the marinade sit and it gets all throughout the meat and blah, blah, blah. And it's just not true. Salt and sugar are the only two things that will actually penetrate meat, which is why a lot of people brine things. Steak doesn't do well with brines because a brine steak is essentially called corned beef or pastrami. It has that like nice snap to it, but that's not what you want for a steak. What I do is I take the salt and I put it on the steak very heavily right before it goes into the pan and that is it. And flat meat is also a cut that gets used a lot for carne asada, at like taquerias, which for me was like a big, big part of my childhood. And then you're just gonna drop the steak into the pan. You're gonna press it down with your fingers to make sure that all of the surface area is touching the pan because this is only gonna be cooked with direct heat. I'm immediately looking around to see where my fire alarm is because it's gonna go off. There's also a lot of people who think that medium rare is the only way to cook a steak. But with flat meat, there's so much like great intramuscular fat that runs throughout there and it's generally pretty thin that you can afford to take it to a medium and it'll be a lot more forgiving. Just gonna flip it once. Gorgeous, we got a beautiful crust on that. Oh, there it goes, okay. Calm down, all right? We're not hurting anybody. We're just trying to do our job, all right? Chill. Anyway, so we're gonna let her- Ah, oh, sh Julia! I'm offering $1 million cash to any scientist who can create a smoke alarm for a house that can tell the difference between an actual fire and someone cooking a Steak. It started saying fire. Fire. What if the alarm was like, nice job cooking the steak, Josh? I detected this is a steak. Okay, so our steak's been resting for three minutes and we did not have to evacuate the building, which, wow, that's always a win. So, the key to slicing steak. Oh wait, first, grab a knife. This is Thunder Fury Blessed Blade of the Wind Seeker. It's my prize knife. You want to slice your steak against the grain of the meat. What that means, you look at the way that the fat is going in the muscular tissue and you want to cut perpendicular to it. Your knife blade goes, do you guys remember geometry? Cut against the grain of your meat. Yeah, look at that. See, it's such a thin steak, but when you cook it in a pan, you can get it to like a perfect medium rare or medium. I honestly think citrus and steak is such an underrated combination because steak has so much fat in it that citrus just cuts through beautifully. Also, this is a common cut that's used in carne asada, so I just take a little bit of lime juice and squeeze it right on top. The hot beef fat and the cold lime juice to me is just like, mwah. That's perfect. It literally takes six minutes to do. This is the single best weeknight steak. It's so cheap, it's affordable. You really almost can't screw it up. Flat meat's making a comeback in 2020. We're riding the flat meat train all the way to Flavortown. We're gonna take this top sirloin, it's about an inch thick and it's about 12 ounces. 
and we're gonna broil it. So broiling, we've talked about this before, it's literally just that big old thing on top of your oven that gets super, super hot, and so it's great for like crisping things up, melting cheese on top of some midnight nachos, and especially good for cooking steak. I'm gonna season up my 12 ounce, one inch thick steak with a teaspoon of salt. And you wanna get some good quality salt, like uh, Morton's. All we're gonna be doing is broiling this on high and you wanna make sure your oven rack is at the top setting so it's closest to the heat source. This is almost going to mimic what a grill does to a steak. It's gonna get a ton of very, very hot heat that is not coming from the flush of a metal pan. That's a weird way to say it. It's just got a bunch of like jets of flames hitting the meat and it's not sitting on something like a skillet where you're actually getting all that surface area contact. So, go right under the broiler. Gonna broil it for about eight minutes on one side, flip it, and we should get a perfect medium rare. All right, so our sirloin's been in there for about eight minutes under high on the broiler. And so we're just gonna take it out. You can hear it sizzling, you can see some smoke, which is good. Give her a turn. And you see the underside, still got the raw on it. Just gonna pop that in for about four minutes and then we're gonna take it out. All right, so we got a steak coming out of the broiler and what we need to do is let it rest. So we're just gonna pop it right on the cutting board right there. All right, so let's go ahead and slice into this. Look at that, we hit more of a medium than a medium rare, but that's totally fine. That dip it in some juices. Mmm. For my money, sirloin has the beefiest flavor of any steak. Ribeye, you're getting like a ton of fat in there. Flat meat can't handle a super long cook. But top sirloin, it's just got like such a pure, beefy flavor. This is the easiest way to go. We're gonna move on to the special occasion steak, the Mac Daddy of them all, the ribeye. I feel like back in the day, during the Patrick Bateman swing in American Psycho 80s, everyone was so hyped up on the filet mignon. And then people gradually realized that filet mignon, though it's super tender and very expensive, it doesn't come with the most flavor. Ribeye will get you the most flavor. There's multiple parts to it. You got the cap right there that's called the deckle that has just like the most marvelous ribbling. <laughs> ribbling? What is this? Not a word. It has the most marvelous marbling. The marvelous Mrs. Marble. And then there's a ton of fat running through it. What that means is you need to bring all that fat up to temperature very slowly. So we're gonna do a technique called the reverse sear. All it means is you're gonna throw it in like a pretty low temperature oven for a while to bring everything inside up to the appropriate temperature and then you're gonna sear it really hot on a pan. The technique used to be sear it in a pan then throw it in the oven, but turns out it's actually a lot easier to control. It makes a better steak and it's easier for you to get it in the oven and then sear it later. This is about a 24 ounce, two inch thick ribeye. I always go for about a teaspoon of salt per 12 ounces of steak. And if you really wanna do it right, you're gonna rub some salt on the actual fat as well. When you have a steak this thick, you essentially want to sear every side of it later. So it'll be nice that that is all nice and salty. Oh, it's a big boy. Pop in the oven at 275. Wait exactly 22 minutes and 30 seconds, flip it, keep it in there for another 22 minutes and 30 seconds, and then we're gonna see it later. All right, so our steak's been in there for exactly 22 minutes and 30 seconds. Simply, simply, simply going to flip it, still completely raw in the middle, another 20 minutes, but you can already see like that ribeye fat has started to break down, which is a really awesome sign. The fat, you can actually see it start to break down. It has almost completely changed color. It's not this like bright white anymore. It's almost gelatinous, which is really awesome. We wanna get this to a perfect medium rare, which is 135 degrees. I am going to be using a thermometer for this. There's other ways to temperature check it. You can use the old finger method, but that is not accurate at all. Like not to brag, I got really jacked hand meat. So my hand meat always feels well done, baby. I'm gonna pull mine at 127 and then it's gonna rise about an additional eight degrees when you let it rest for five minutes. There we go, nice and seared. So you want it screaming hot and you just wanna sear it for about four minutes on each side. And then when I flip it, I'm gonna add just this hefty amount of butter in there and some smashed garlic and just give it a nice little garlicky aroma. All right, let's just flip this, see how we're looking. Oh yeah, look at that. That is an absolutely gorgeous crust right there. Boom, butter right in there. It's gonna start melting and then you're just gonna add your crushed garlic right in there. That is lovely. The garlic's gonna start to brown. That's just flavor happening. I'm just gonna pull it and let it rest. And then we got all that butter. We can just dump it over later. No, I'm gonna dump it over now. Might as well, right? Like we got some beautiful brown butter. There we go. Now this is really important. If you have a very thick steak, you need to rest it. I think a lot of people frankly overstate the need to rest. 
you'll have a lot of people who cook like a very thin steak, like a flat meat. But like you gotta rest it for five minutes and then you're just eating cold steak, which to me is very dumb. However, you got a giant steak like this, it's retaining so much heat in there. And if you cut into it, all the juices are just going to completely bleed out. And by the time you're eating the end of your steak, it's going to be dry. So we're gonna let this rest for five minutes, but not enough for it to get cold. And then we're gonna slice into it. Oh, that is cooked beautifully. Perfect, medium rare to medium all the way through. Look at that, that is lovely. There's only one more thing to do, and that is to just pick this thing up and eat it. I'm gonna dip it back in the buttery juices because why not, we're here. Mm. It's hard to host a cooking show when you have a bunch of delicious steak in your mouth. This is unbelievable, the reverse sear method gets you just like, such a beautiful medium rare, but all that fat is broken down, so you're not chewing through fat, even with the steak that's not, you know, cooked all the way through. That's about all I have to say. <laughs> that's about all I have to say about that. Thank you so much for joining us in the Mythical Kitchen. We got new videos coming out on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and Hot Dog is a Sandwich every Wednesday. Drop a line in the comments, tell me what mythical dishes you want to learn how to cook next. Tag us on Instagram at Mythical Kitchen with hashtag dreams become food. Get as messy as you want in your kitchen when you have the Mythical Kitchen Towel. Available now at mythical.com.